Good morning, Scott Davis from TechWise Group. Today is April 14th, 2020. It is National Library Workers Day. So if you know a library worker, please thank them. Uh, National Library Workers Day is observed Tuesday of the second full week in April every year. Uh, on the technology standpoint, uh, 500,000 Zoom accounts have been sold on the dark web or are available for purchase on the dark web. Uh, so if you have a Zoom account, I would probably make the recommendation of resetting that password now. Um, if you use the service Quid, Quid is an online marketplace for stickers, cards, toys, collectibles, etc. Uh, they've had 4 million of their accounts uh, and the credentials also being made available on the dark web here over the last 72 hours. Um, Microsoft and Google announced uh, that they were going to postpone um, the shutdown of basic authentication. So there's multiple ways that you authenticate with websites. You go somewhere, you type your username and password in. Uh, on the front end, that's what it is. But on the back end, there's different ways of doing it. So basic authentication has been kind of the, the de facto easiest way to program it because it transmits it usually over clear text or in an easily breakable encryption method. Uh, so basic authentication is the least secure method of collecting that username and password and sending it over your website request. Um, both were planned to begin that transition of decommissioning or completely shutting down basic authentication and going to OAuth uh, version two. OAuth is more secure, it's you know a little harder program but it's about the security now it's about protecting information it's about encrypting uh, but due to the COVID-19 coronavirus uh, what's going around uh, both Microsoft and Google are going to be postponing the termination of that basic authentication um, they are both stating that they are not going to allow new setups new applications to use basic authentication which is the right direction it just gives you a little bit more time if you are already using it to transition off of it uh, which in reality if you're using basic authentication you should stop using basic authentication and go to OAuth version 2. Moving in Exchange Server um, Exchange Server is your email system. If you're running your email server locally, um, you know, being in technology as long as I've been, I've worked on a lot of Exchange Servers. And Exchange Servers is one of the things a lot of IT people are afraid to upgrade. Uh, they're really, it's like, I may break something. Um, <coughs> but it's not that scary. Um, and it needs to happen. Um, so just recently, Microsoft uh, put out a, um, a service pack. Actually, the service pack came out March 17th of 2020. So there's been plenty of time uh, for your IT service provider to get it done. Uh, but looking at it, um, the exchange, um, it, it's time, it's, it's too late. I mean, you immediately need to patch this critical flaw at this point. Um, there's over 350,000 Microsoft Exchange servers out there that are not yet patched. Uh, now you think 350,000 Exchange servers, what does that mean over the span of the world? Uh, it's about 80% or more of the Exchange servers that are online. Um, so what is you know exactly the CVE 2020-0688 um, it's pre-authentication remote code. Um, in essence, it's going to allow a hacker to get into your network uh, using the exchange as an entry point. Um, patching the flaw, Microsoft tagged it uh, ex uh, exploitation more likely, uh, exploitability index assessment. Um, you know, it's time to patch it. Um, you know. The CVE came out, the patch came out March 17th. You know, we're approaching April 17th. Uh, if you're not patching your Exchange servers on a regular basis, there are other issues and you really need to question if your IT department or your IT vendor is doing what's needed to protect you. Um, another important note with Exchange Server is Exchange Server 2010 does go end of life October 13th 
of 2020. That has not been delayed. That has not been extended. Exchange server, October 13th, 2020. That is this year. Uh, so very similar to the whole Windows 10 upgrades, you know, that a lot of organizations saw the beginning of the year where Windows 7 went end of life January 14th. Uh, SQL Server was the same thing, you know, SQL Server 2010 went end of life. And now Exchange Server 2010 is going end of life this October. So make sure you have a plan in action. Um, you know, chances are if you're running an Exchange Server 2010, the server hardware is going to need to be upgraded and everything else. It makes sense to consider going to Office 365 or Microsoft 365 for your email and moving off of your locally hosted Exchange server. Uh, if you're a government organization, there are G plans. Um, and really what Microsoft 365 is going to do for you, A, you know, it's going to keep the management of it. It's going to keep it updated. It's going to keep it secure. Uh, as long as you go through the base setup and you take the time to set it up right. Uh, but you're paying a monthly fee for your users instead of paying a lump sum of X amount of dollars for the server hardware, for the licenses, for the user cows. Uh, I mean, you're 10, 15, $20,000 into exchange licenses, depending on your user count, if not more, if not, maybe a little less, again, depending on your user licenses and how many e email accounts you actually need. But when you compare that price, you know, from Office 365 and what your cost is monthly to what your, your upfront investment is with Exchange Server, um, you're always going to be on the latest version with Office 365. It's, you know, it's not going to be, oh, well, I'm running 2010, 2013 came out. Do I upgrade that or do I wait to 2016 or 2019? So my recommendation is typically, you know, talk to someone um, about moving to Office 365. Talk to people that know how to do it um, and have just been through it. Um, at TechWise Group, we do a countless amount of, um, you know, either Exchange Server or just migrations into Office 365 on a monthly basis. So there's a lot going on. The other exciting thing, uh, Microsoft Teams has released kind of one of its first updates to try to bring competition you know more closely in with zoom um you can now there's some pre-selected <coughs> oh excuse me there's some pre-selected uh backgrounds that you can actually choose from in your zoom meetings so that's kind of exciting zoom has had it for a while microsoft teams is bringing it in now so if uh on your windows machine you open up your microsoft teams click the filter icon uh, that, you know, it usually you click to blur your background. Uh, but now when you click that, it gives you the blur option and the additional options of some pre-selected backgrounds that you can choose. There's still some advancements coming with Teams. There's a lot in the roadmap. A lot of them they're promising are going to be delivered before the end of April, including the taking it from the four screens of four videos that you can see um, of people to up to nine and even more beyond that out after the month of April. So the big things to take away, you know, if you're using Quid, Zoom, just take a minute, update your password. Uh, if you're using that same password for other things, consider changing those as well. Uh, that gets into a whole password management episode. Um, but if you're using Zoom, if you're using Quid, you know, consider changing that. Uh, if you're a developer and you're developing things and you're using basic authentication, it's time to stop. Uh, and if you have an Exchange server, if you're running your email server locally using the Microsoft Exchange server, reach out to your IT vendor or reach out to me, uh, scott at techwisegroup.com. I'd be happy to kind of tell you what version you're on pretty quick and easily. Uh, but take a look, you know, make sure your exchange servers are getting upgraded. Um, the, the flaw that's out there right now is being actively used in the, in the market, in the dark web market. Uh, so take a minute, update that and, you know, have fun with teams. So have yourself a great Tuesday, have yourself a great rest of the week. I'll see everybody tomorrow.